and sometimes the ATC controllers can talk really, really fast, and it seems really, really fast to the new pilot. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kent Little. I've been a CFI here at Thrust Flight for a little over a year now. Today we'll be talking about common mistakes that student pilots make on the radios. So one of the biggest common mistakes that students have is keying up the mic before you ever know what you're going to say. One of the biggest problems that, that we see with brand new pilots is they key up the mic and then they're hanging out there in dead air silence for two, three, five seconds with nothing to say. And then we slap their hands off the mic. Surprise. Get that coming out of my face. You always want to know what you're going to say before you ever key up the mic. Run through it in your head before you mic up. Just make sure that you're able to communicate clearly what you're intending to say. Another common issue that we run into here at Addison, every time we come into the airspace, we communicate with regional approach and then we get handed off to Addison Tower. A big issue that pops up uh, is as soon as a pilot is instructed to switch over to Addison Tower, the second they switch over to the new frequency, they key in and let Addison know that they're there. The problem with that is, in a lot of cases, they're probably interrupting a conversation that's actively going on. That leads to a lot of confusion, miscommunication, and just frustration for both the pilot and for ATC. So whenever you switch over from one frequency to another, think what you're gonna say first, and then give it a one or two second count before you actually mic up, just to make sure that there's no other pilots that are actively speaking with the tower or the approach controllers, or that there's not a response that's being waited on, or to make sure that there's not a conversation that the question's been asked and ATC is now waiting on a response from another pilot. We want to make sure that the full conversation is able to happen without being interrupted. Another issue that we run into is not reading back ATC instructions in full. Anytime ATC tells you a specific runway or it gives you a specific heading, you want to make sure that you read back in full exactly what they told you. That way it prevents runway incursions or issues where aircraft could be in conflict with each other. So always make sure you read back the full ATC instructions. That way there's no confusion on what you're supposed to do and ATC is able to verify that you understand completely. A lot of times with brand new pilots, uh, when they're talking with ATC, they get a little bit nervous. They're getting a lot of instruction in a, in a short amount of time. And sometimes the ATC controllers can talk really, really fast. And it seems really, really fast to the new pilot. <laughs> <clears throat> One thing I would caution against is reading back to ATC what you thought you heard rather than what you know you heard. If there's any question about what ATC instructed you to do, always ask. It's far better to ask for clarification than to assume something and continue on and potentially put yourself or another pilot in danger. Danger, danger, danger. Unbelievable. Another issue that we run into every now and then with new students is being proactive on loading radio frequencies. When you switch over from one frequency to another, that gives you an opportunity to load the next frequency that you think you'll be using into your standby comms. So when you switch from regional approach to Addison Tower, you can go ahead and load Addison Ground and standby. That way, as soon as you touch down on the ground and you're being hurried off the runway and told to monitor ground as you roll off of the runway, all it is is one click of a button and you're already on frequency with Addison Ground. Last issue that comes up a lot with radios is knowing how to use the squelch on the radio. If you're flying in the airplane and you hear your co-pilot or your instructor breathing into their microphone and it's annoying, <coughs> or you hear them chewing their gum, that means the squelch is turned down too low. You can turn that up and it'll block out some of that ambient noise so that the only thing you're listening to is radio communications when they're actually intended to be transmitted over the radio. And that way you're not listening to gum smacking or potentially air rushing into the cockpit from a window or an air vent. All right, that wraps our video for today on common radio mistakes that student pilots make. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.